his guilty plea. Howell originally pled guilty to the manslaughter of Nilsa Harris Mendy and took to a plea deal which would land him 15 years in jail. Like many a serial killer getting cold feet about imprisonment, he later attempted to recant his statements, saying he never killed Arismendi and only confessed because he was being forced to make a deal. He even went as far as saying to the judge I offer my sincerest condolences. I know they feel I murdered their daughter. I didn't murder Nosa. Fortunately, the judge saw through that and went forward with the sentencing. He said his victims should have known they were going to die. Two main factors tied all seven of the victims together, drugs or prostitution. An arrest warrant quotes Howell as saying the victims should have known they were going to die because of the lifestyles they led. Though he murdered all his victims in 2003, most of their remains weren't found until 2015. He was already in prison for manslaughter when he was charged with the murders of six more. He became Connecticut's most prolific serial killer. He became Connecticut's most prolific serial killer. He slept next to one of his victims' dead body and named her baby. Continuing to spill his guts to an inmate who probably never wanted to know about his escapades in the first place, Howell explained it got too cold outside to bury the body of his first victim. So instead, he wrapped the corpse in plastic and slept next to it in his van for two weeks, but you know, not before removing her fingerprints and jaw. He also shared that he nicknamed her baby. He added some of her body parts were buried in Virginia, as opposed to Connecticut, where the rest of her body was found. He named his van the Murder Mobile. Along with christening himself as a sick river, Howell named his van, the place where he killed his victims. He called it the Murder Mobile. It's quite evident Howell isn't very creative with his nicknames Sick Ripper, Murder Mobile, and Baby, the last of which will be touched upon later. Police found DNA matches in his Murder Mobile linking him to a string of murders. After finding a blood match to missing woman, Nilsa Arismendi, authorities charged Howell with her murder, even though they hadn't recovered a body. Also found in his murder mobile was a hammer, the weapon he used to kill Arismendi, as well as tapes of him fornicating with women. The police later learned how well assaulted at least three of the women he murdered. He had a garden where he buried the bodies. Howell buried the bodies in the woods behind a strip mall, and he called this spot his garden. His garden contained the remains of all seven of his victims, though it took the police multiple searches to find all of them. They uncovered the bodies over a span of eight years. The police found the remains of the first body in 2007 after a hunter in the woods found a human skull. Later that same year, they found the remains of three more of Howell's victims, but it wasn't until 2015 they found the remains of the rest. He called himself a sick ripper. Responsible for the murders of seven people, William Devin Howell came up with his own nickname after referring to himself as a sick ripper to another inmate. According to this inmate, Howell shared stories with him about his killings, even providing a motive by describing a monster inside him that just came out. During Howell's talks with his cellmate, he also claimed that he said if he hadn't have been caught, he was going to go cross-country and kill others. Clearly a monster existed, and that monster is Howell himself. Many serial killers blame something else for their actions. The BTK killer 
once said of his desire to kill, I actually think it's a demon that's within me. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below. And also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then.